Yes, uh, as you have may have heard, uh, there is now a new Yang book. We have waited many years to get a Yang book, a book about Yang. I mean, how can the standard be growing and thriving if it doesn't have its own book? Uh, actually, I would love that there were many books about Yang for different segments and different takes and different whatever. But since nobody did it, I had to do it myself. Actually, I did it uh, together with uh, Benoit Claes, Joe Clark. Uh, Benoit Claes, uh, I'll get to that. This is what the book looks like. Uh, if you take, take the pages and split them up like this, uh, we are talking about uh, network management and why, should, why the world must change. Uh, this is the why. why does, what is NetConf and Yang uh, trying to do for you? And then uh, we talk about data model-driven management in general, which is the network programmability take on the whole thing. We spend a good amount of time on explaining how Yang works with some practical use cases. We have uh, sections on NetConf, RESTConf, and GNMI. So it's, uh, we thought about making three chapters after that, but we put it into one. Uh, that is explaining very much what these uh, messages that you send around are, are doing. And uh, a small section on telemetry. Uh, we talked about what other people are doing with Yang, especially in the standard bodies. And then some practical uh, sec sec chapters down here. Uh, they have some long titles that so they didn't really fit in here. Automation is as good as the data models, and their related metadata, and their tools for the network architect and operator, and so on for each one of those. <laughs> and then, uh, then one section, number 10 here, on using NetConf and Yang in, in practical real life. So that's a use case with NSO that will take you through, all the way from a business case, all the way to looking at how uh, Network-wide transactions actually work on the network level. And the last chapter there is uh, some modeling tips. It's like this uh, 6087, the, the guidelines for how you should uh, create your models, but what my version of that, or my extension to that. Uh, this book, I have one copy here to look at. Uh, I, we were trying to bring a lot of books here, but things didn't pan out that way. Uh, so you have to order uh, your book if you want one uh, on Amazon or whatever favorite bookstores you have. It's available in a lot of places, either as a soft or hard copy. The authors, I was uh, starting to say, talk about Benoit Claes. Uh, he was the initiator of this project. He, he was talking to his managers uh, and they said, yeah, you need to write this Yang book finally. He has been the area director for the NetConf and Yang at ITF for many, many years. So it's kind of, he, f he eventually got this, uh, his responsibility to, okay, now write the book. So he was uh, searching around for people that could help him do that. And uh, all, the, all the other ones that were part of ITF, they declined, so then he came to me and uh, asked me to help with this. And uh, Joe Clark is another one of those ITF uh, goers that uh, is working at, all, we, all of us are working at Cisco, but we tried very hard not to make this a Cisco book, even though there is a fair amount of mention of Cisco in here. But it, it, we won't really wanted to bring in a w much wider view. It should not be a Cisco only thing here, especially since it's about interoperability and programmability. The world does not consist only of Cisco. So one way of doing that is that uh, we, uh, for each chapter, we wanted to have an interview with one of the industry experts. And originally, we wanted to have 12 chapters in the book, so we interviewed 12 people. In the end, we canceled the last chapter, so now we have 11 chapters and two interviews in the first chapter instead. So you can see here, we tried hard to reach out to other, other organizations than Cisco people. So we have Oracle, Juniper, University, Jacobs University, Watson Networks, Huawei, Honu, Cessnet, Deutsche Telekom, and UMRX represented apart from Cisco here. Together with this book, uh, since we wanted this to be taking the, the whole thing from the, the architecture side of things all the way to the hands-on, so together with this book, we have a hands-on project. So you can go to GitHub, clone, and work with the same examples that we have in the book on your own machines. And either point out mistakes that I made or uh, develop with the latest versions of the machines that you have or what it is. Try out things. So uh, uh, 
you have some different uh, s directories in this in this uh, GitHub project, which matches the different sections in the book. Like if you go in chapter three, the first six ones are, are matching that one. This one matches chapter ten, and chapter four is also using different sections in this to play around with netconf and GNMI and so on. So what I wanted to spend the rest of the presentation about is to give you a short sample of each chapter. You know, they have at Amazon, peek inside, and you see a few lines of everything, uh, every chapter, so you can see what's going on. So see if this is a book for you or not. So I'll do that now for you. I know it's, uh, if you're making a presentation, you're not supposed to read aloud anything on the slides, but I will do that anyway for this particular coding purpose, right? So one of the important things I wanted to want you all to understand is the purpose. Of the, why did we write this book? So this is what uh, this is the reason, though. The entire networking industry is being pressured to automate in order to scale and move faster. And this book explains how to unlock the power of network automation using Yang. There are many barriers to automation, and the strongest one is the need for a common understanding between network operators and the software and hardware providers. To build this understanding, three things are sorely needed. First, the participants need to have a common language. And this book provides the common terminology, models, and awareness of use cases and tools so that effective communication is possible. And second, automation is not something that happens because you make a computer run in a loop. Network automation is actually a very hard problem. It's a distributed, parallel, real-time, highly available, performance-sensitive, security-sensitive control problem at the heart of society. And this requires a system architecture. And uh, this system architecture already exists, but it's not very well known. Even many seasoned professionals are missing key pieces of the overall picture. And this book paints the landscape so that all parties understand where their pieces fit and how to achieve common goals. And thirdly, as you may have heard, he who knows how will be Howard, and she know who knows why will be his manager. So understanding the reasons for an architecture choice is a core aspect of knowing the architecture itself. So why is really important. And this book provides this background, or at least we try to. So by giving rich backgrounds, and using examples, and explaining why, and providing ample opportunities for hands-on work, we hope that this book will be useful to you as a networking professional, as well as for the advancement of the industry as a whole. How do you like that goal? Sounds pretty good. Uh, you know me, right? Yeah. Do you like this? Is that a good ap approach for a book? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm not sure. Maybe I shouldn't give this to you anyway. You have to earn the right to use this material, do you know? <laughs> okay, the first chapter talks about the background. Why, wh how did we get here? What, what happened so far? So uh, it talks about things like FCAPs, DevOps, SDN, NFV, Elastic Clouds, Data Model Driven Management, Telemetry, Intent-Based Networking, Information Models versus Data Models, and it talks a little bit about CLI, SNMP, NetFlow, IPFIX, and Syslog. So it sets a background. Where did we come from? And it also gives you a terminology so that you can follow on the discussions later in the book. If you think that chapter is boring, you can skip that. Then uh, you come to the data model driven management. This is the call to the future. This is what we want to do. It explains uh, the good old RFC 3535 from 2001 and 2 there. Uh, that explains the, the requirements for NetConf and Yang, um, for NetConf, and for auto, auto, network automation, really. What do you need? What did the operators back then say that they need? And it's also talking about the base technologies that is be used for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the solution, like XML, JSON, protobufs, CBOR. And it discusses very briefly, just touches on what NetConf, RESTConf, GNMI, COMI, and those things are, so that you should have a base foundation for, for understanding it. The, the language in the book might be, I mean, this is a quote from the book, just in, from the middle, randomly. I went around in the book just to see how it sounds. In order to add an LTVPN leg to the network, the LTVPN applications running in the NMS must touch at least the CE device on the new site, the PE device to which the CE device is connected, the monitoring system, and probably a few devices related to security. It could happen that the CE is a, is a virtual device, in which case the NMS may have to speak to some container manager or virtual infrastructure manager VIM to spin up the virtual machine, VM. Sometimes 20 devices or so must be touched in order to spin up a single L3VPN leg. All of them are required for the leg to be functional. All firewalls and routers with access control lists need to get their updates or traffic does not flow. 
Encryption needs to be set up properly at both ends or traffic is not safe. Monitoring needs to be set up or loss of service is not detected. So this just to give you a feel of what it might sound like. Chapter three then is about Yang. It explains everything in Yang from ground up. I know many of you, most of you, or maybe all of you know Yang pretty well. So you can of course skip this chapter, but I think it's, it's a nice journey. It's building up uh, more and more complicated uh, structures and looking at different areas. And there may be a few things uh, even for seasoned Yangers in here. And uh, as I said, this is all available in the GitHub project, so you can follow on each step of this journey in, in your own code if you want to play with it. So it uh, goes all the way from introducing what lists, uh, leaves and lists are in key expressions, all the way to extensions, uh, deviations, and things like that. Uh, and uh, well, of course, you can't get away without talking about XPath. And we also spend some time to explain why did we invent NDA, uh, um, NMDA at all. And here's a quote again. Uh, One of the merits of using groupings like this is that the number of lines in the Yang module gets smaller, so you have, to be so you have less model text to maintain. Another benefit is that if you improve the grouping, the improvement immediately applies everywhere. Just make sure that is what you want. The downside with using too many groupings is that sometimes it gets hard to follow multiple levels of user statements crisscrossing the model. In other words, do not go overboard with groupings. Actually, the same references to title and format are also found in the purchase action. Use it to your new grouping to be consistent and save a few lines, as is shown in example 3-21. And then you see some code. So I mean, this is just to give you a feeling. Next chapter is about NetConf, RESTCOF, and GNMI, so the underpinnings of all this automation. So it uh, shows you a bunch of messages using uh, XML and JSON and whatever, uh, so that you understand exactly why is this, how does this uh, hello work, and how do you do an edit config, and then it compares the strengths and weaknesses of, of these protocols against each other. How does edit config work? How does Yang patch work? How, what, do you, what do you have in GNMI? Uh, so to see how, how, which one you should use. And another quote here, RESTConf versus NETCONF. Many of the REST principles are very similar to how NETCONF works. The client-server model, the layered system principle, and the first two uniform interface principles are exactly the same. A key differentiator is the stateless uh, server principle. NetConf is based on clients establishing a session through the server, and that is clearly not stateless. In NetConf, clients often connect and then manipulate the candidate data store with a number of edit config operations. At a certain time, the client may issue a validation call. If that succeeds on all servers, a commit operation may follow. This sort of behavior is not possible in RESTConf or any system that strictly follows the REST principles. It requires the server to keep some sort of client state. And if that was added to RESTConf, the protocol would no longer fulfill the principles of REST. Neither could this be added in a future version of RESTConf for the same reason. Strictly speaking, it wouldn't be REST anymore. So if you want to understand why things are in a certain way in REST and RESTConf, uh, as opposed to NetConf, there could be something there. Then we have the telemetry uh, chapter explained, and you see uh, uh, talk about uh, telemetry concepts like on-change, periodic, dial-in, dial-out and uh, how well these uh, mechanisms support these uh, concepts like uh, NetConf event notifications, Yang push, open config streaming, telemetry and stuff. And uh, here I quoted the picture because it's easier to read, uh, less to read for me. Then we have uh, what other uh, organizations are doing in the industry. I mean, ITF is of course, uh, in some way, at least in my mind, uh, the center of, uh, of the universe when it comes to Yang. But there's lots of things going on in other places, like Open Daylight, PBF, MEF, IEEE, and so on. They're all working with Yang in one way or another. So if you want to have a map of where you should look for the sort of things that you're interested in, you can have a look at Chapter 6. It talks about who is doing what. Then we have the more practical tools chapters with the very long titles. Automation is as good as uh, the data models, the related data data, and the tools for the network architecture and operator. So this is taking up tools like Yang Catalog and Piang. It's talking about uh, Yang Suite, NetCon Console, NC Client, Ansible, Curl, and so on. And uh, it's also telemetry tools like Pipeline and NX. And a brief mention of some commercial products that you may have heard of. And uh, then showing how you can use these tools to do certain things. So you can download these tools and replicate this uh, on your own machines if you like. It can be a way of realizing, oh, here's actually a tool that does something uh, in the direction that could help me. And then we have the same thing for the module author. 
then there's a little bit different kind of tools that you would need. So you have, again, Yang Catalog, and Piang ConfDC, Yang Lint, where you can validate your models. Uh, from the chapter, you might read something like, uh, another tool provided by the Yang Catalog is called Impact Analysis. This tool provides you with a color-coded graph showing how one or more modules interrelate in terms of dependencies and dependence. This is Impact analysis, an <laughs> analysis shows what modules depend on a given module, as well as what modules a given module depends on. Figure 8-2 provides an impact analysis graph showing both dependencies and dependence for ITF routing. And that's one of the core modules, so it's a lot of lines there. Makes a nice flower. And chapter 9 is also about tools for the application developers. That's basically NSO users and, uh, that were writing service applications. So these are tools for parsing Yang modules and uh, for interacting, generating codes, this sort of thing. So Yang Catalog, again, is a good tool. Piang, Libyang, you have Curl. Uh, you have different uh, libraries that you use for, for building applications. For example, in uh, Java or uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ruby is what I wanted to say. Uh, YDK has bindings to many different languages and so on. A quote from the chapter again. Uh, this creates an oc underscore ifpy file that contains all of the binding definitions for openconfig-interfaces.yang and openconfig if ip yang. This module can then be used to build the payload for various netconf or restconf operations. Those payloads can be used by NC clients uh, or the request modules for sending data directly to the device. Example. 9-20 shows how to build an RPC payload using PAM bind, and then use the NC client to add an IP address to an interface. And then you have a Python product that you can work with if you want. <coughs> Chapter 10 uh, is maybe interesting if, you're, uh, if you want to explain what you're doing at work to somebody in the networking industry, because if you're building service applications, this will feel much at home for you. So this uh, project number seven, it starts with a business case, and then goes down and builds a Yang model for that case, and then starts to implement that on uh, using ConfD and NSO, and then uh, looks at the messages flying around with the network by transactions and transactionality and all this. So it's going full stack from the business layers all the way to the lowest technical layers, just to give you a full picture in one chapter. So the purpose of this chapter is to show a full story, starting with the business need and taking it all the way to verifying that it works correctly in the network. This chapter builds a somewhat real software-defined wide area network uh, service using the NSO. Uh, the first step is to design a Yang service model, map it to uh, device models, write a little bit of code to assist in that mapping, and then plug in some devices, configure them for netconf management, and try out, some, try out the service with some service creation, modifications, and rollback. This chapter also examines how the service gets deployed from an orchestrated point of view, as well as netconf messages flying around between the orchestrator and devices. The project is available as a hands-on project if you, that you can clone from GitHub and then build, run, and play with as you please. Instructions for how to obtain the necessary free tools are found within the project readme file, blah, blah. And uh, from the actual content, this is in the preface of the chapter, and here's the content. One, once the key is created, log into the device, install the private key on the device, and enable netconf as shown in example 10-17. So installing the crypto key pair and enabling netconf on Junos. So here are the commands that you do on Junos to make sure uh, netconf is up and running. On the Cisco IOS XE device, the procedure is similar. First, a crypto key pair needs to be generated, blah, blah. And finally, chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11. Uh, it's about Yang model design. So it starts off with some Yang modeling strategy. How should you start thinking about your Yang modeling? And then it contains a section uh, on Yang modeling tips. For example, how do you name a module? How do you use leaf refs? How do you use XPath in a responsible manner? How do you use, uh, what do you do when you have things to enumerate? There are a number of different ways to do that. How do you choose your keys? How do you work with types empty and Boolean? Wh what, what about deviations? Then another section uh, with common mistakes. I've been reviewing quite a few modules uh, at ITF and other places, and I sort of established a view of what sort of mistake people do. So I try to address the most common things that people do that they shouldn't. And then uh, at the end, we have a section on backwards compatibility. How should you think about that? There's a section in uh, RFC 6020 and 7950 that talks about what you're allowed to do. Are those really strict rules, or can you break them? What happens if you do that? And there's a discussion about that. So here's a quote from that chapter again. 
So therefore, there's a state Yang statement called deviate that allows implementers to officially declare in what ways an implementation differs from the standard. The existence of this keyword, however, does not imply in any way that clients will be able to deal with the, de the declared deviation. In short, deviations are very poor substitutes for not implementing a standard. A deviation is somewhat akin to an out-of-order sign hanging off a coffee machine or conference room projector. It signals a non-ideal condition, but at least the user is made aware, doesn't waste their time figuring out the problem, and it's less likely to send reports about the issue. So let's give you a feeling. This is, that's all the 11 chapters. You can get some sort of sample from each one now. How do you like that? Is that interesting to you? Yeah. Right. Thank you. So uh, it's a quite new. It, it was uh, published mid-May or something like that. Uh, uh, on, uh, it's available on uh, O'Reilly's Safari, books, uh, whatever. It's available on Amazon. Uh, inform it and a bunch of other places. I don't know uh, if, if anybody's actually buying this or not, but uh, not yet at least. But we did get a couple of reviews, and I, here's one I particularly like from one of our reviewers. It's a well-written book. My group especially will mandate every new guy to go through this book. I personally spent a lot of time to find tools, understand Yang, etc. when I joined Yang group. All this time could have been saved with this book. So that, that's the sort of, when I see that, I get warm. <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted people to feel. It's, it's save them time, make things easier, give, get an overview of what's going on here. That's exactly what this book is about. And with that, thank you very much. Oops. Cisco, the bridge to possible.